Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Before I start the video, I just want to mention real quick, if you guys are familiar with the channel Top Trends, they do videos, they do top 10 videos about like trending topics and just cool things. And recently they did a video of top 10 homemade tanks and I was number six on that list. So I'm gonna roll a couple of clips of that for you right now. Number six, convertible mini tank. Now a lot of the tanks that I found were copies based off real life tanks. However, this next one was completely custom made and uploaded by Real Steel 1776 and it's one of the coolest tanks on this list. The reason I say this is number one, it's convertible and has no roof. Number two, it just looks so unique. And number three, it was almost entirely built by one young man over the course of seven months, which is incredibly impressive and definitely took a lot of time and dedication. I'm not too sure if the tank is completely finished but either way I'm still very impressed. So anyways I just thought it was cool to be featured on a channel that has like 1.6 million subscribers which is about roughly 1.6 million more than I have right now but give it time. Anyways let's get to the Okay, so I'll start here at the back. As you can see, I completely rebuilt the back profile of the tank. It looks completely different now. The way it was before was the frame came back like this. Came out and then to a point right here because that's the way the tank looked of the original tank I was going to make before I changed my mind. After I changed my mind though, this wouldn't just not work. Um, it was much too different than what I wanted it to look like. So now what I did was cut the frame up there, cut it off down there, cut off this support that was on there, um, welded on these two pieces of angle iron there, those two red ones, to give it a taper to come back and then connected that in the middle, put this big one along the bottom, running the whole length with a couple supports as well, and that's what it's like now. It looks much better. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, I've been looking at the back profile for it, of this for the longest time, thinking how I would change it to make it the way I want it to. So I finally got that and I'm really happy with it. As you can see, I also changed the position of the gas tank. The gas tank's back here now instead of up there because when I cut the frame right here, I had to take off one of the supports for the gas tank. And since I had a whole bunch of room back here, after I changed the setup, I just decided to put the gas tank back here now. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I just have a couple pieces of angle iron coming out there, and I actually have it set down on a couple bolts here, which attached to metal here on the flange of the gas tank. So that's just where it's now. I think that's a much more convenient spot for it. I'm happy with that. And the other thing, I used to have this type of clear plastic line or rubber line as the gas line but that stuff's not really good for um, gas line because it shrinks and dries out and it's not good so I got some actual gas line here some of that actual ga black gas line from another lawnmower at the junkyard for like for free pretty much and that works much better now that's the real gas line another thing I did up here was just so this comes up to the gas filter right there and then I added this valve right here to shut off the fuel. Right now it's off and then you can turn it like that to be on and off. So you, that allows you to turn the gas off and then run the fuel out of the carburetor for when you're, I'm, like, I'm storing this for long periods of time so that the gas doesn't gum up the carburetor. And yeah and then okay so then the thing about this was I wanted to make um, uh, attachment to this so that when I have the whole body of the tank built I'll be able to just have an attachment on this that goes up to some knob up on the top that I can just access from there instead of having to open up and reach in here but that's for later that's the back of it and up on the front now I completely rebuilt the front as well the front idler system that was on there. This was the old stuff. And 
This is the new stuff I have on there. This is much, much better now. I used a piece of, I think, a um, little under a quarter, 3 sixteenths inch, I think, angle iron for this one. Um, that's much better than this crappy stuff I had over here. I used this like green piece of flat bar, and which was really, really crappy steel. I don't know what it was about, but it rusted just sitting around, even though nothing else on the tank rusted. There's something up with this steel that is just really bad, bad quality. Anyways, got this on there now. This is much better. I switched to a three-quarter inch um, round stock here for the axle for the wheels instead of the five-eighths all thread. This is much stronger now. I don't need any inside support like I had for the old stuff. And it's but it's basically the same construction. I just have a slot milled in there with some with this a threaded pot on the end so I can adjust it back and forth to adjust the tension of the tracks. So some supports on the inside. This inside support is pretty much the same as it was before, just a piece of rebar supporting it and then just another little thing right there. And then I also did this morning was put the front profile on there with those two pieces of angle iron forming the wedge on the front. And I think that looks really cool. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Comes to a nice point on the end. And yeah. So that's that's actually mostly it for now. I've been I've still been working on the road wheels. So I'm going to get those done and I'll have a two-part video series about making the road wheels. And then after that, it's not too far away from the next test drive. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.